Welcome to BrandonVot.com. Today, I'm talking with Father Dave Genders. I met Father Dave a few months ago at a youth ministry conference down here in Orlando, and I was immediately intrigued by what I consider to be a walking sign of contradiction. Father Dave is a Carmelite, and so he was walking around in the full Carmelite habit, but he was also carrying an iPad, this kind of new technology that seemed to uh, stand out against the contrast of his habit. And so we got to talking, and I learned that Father Dave was one of the premier uh, people within his order in using new media to reach out and draw other people into the Carmelite order, and also share what the Carmelites are doing around the world. A little bit of uh, Father Dave's background, he uh, graduated with a degree in philosophy from UCLA. He then got his Master's in Divinity from Washington Theological Seminary, and he later got a Master's degree in Communications from Northwestern University. On April 10th, 2010, he made uh, his solemn profession of vows with the Carmelite province of the most pure heart of Mary. And since then, he's been a vocations director for the Carmelites and has also, as I mentioned, been very instrumental in their web presence. Right now, he is the chief digital strategist and also the creative director for the Carmelites. And in this interview, we're going to talk a little bit about his experience, how the Carmelites use new media, and uh, his, his experience also using it to attract and build vocations. So, Father Dave, thanks for uh, joining me to chat. It's good to see you again, and welcome. Thank you. Now, let's begin by talking about how you got into this field. What drew you to the new media? I think it's a passion that I've always had. Perhaps growing up in Los Angeles, where the billboards are larger than the actual buildings, um, I had a sense of the power of this Um, language in our modern society and culture and had a deep appreciation for it as well as a an appreciation I think for just general aesthetics and beauty and how we can communicate those things utilizing these new tools and so it was really an intersection between telling stories in ways that were still beautiful and powerful and yet could harness those same kind of power that had been uh, in some so many ways dem- democratized by the development of technology and um, the various resources that are now available to everyday people. Now, when we talked back in Orlando, I was really blown away by everything you've done with the Carmelite order online. Uh, in the last couple of years, you've kind of rebranded their web presence and have done some remarkable things. Tell me uh, a a summary of a few different projects or endeavors that the Carmelites are engaging in on the internet. Well, yes, um, it's not my doing solely. Um, As you know, uh, these things take a lot of effort, a lot of energy, and a lot of resources. And I've been blessed, I think, first and foremost, to be supported by the Carmelites um, in this way, that they've seen the both the power and the um, the opportunity here to reach a community of people who are uh, deeply appreciative and in need of this presence online. And so um, I think that's the first thing uh, to acknowledge and um, is one of the most important pieces, I think, for any organization to be able to support is that this is a value and that it's worth exploring. Um, But the the various things that we've done over the past uh, year and a half, really, um, I was ordained in uh, just um, in May of 2011. And so um, the past year and a half has been focused primarily on relaunching a um, web that was able to hold content in a way that was relevant uh, to our needs, which was that it be um, that it be able to be managed in a way that we could manage it. So we had to be able to get the content up in a timely fashion and work with a team of people. So this meant uh, designing a website that was uh, really from the ground up with a new content management system. 
Um, but then also to rethink how we engaged people, which was probably the cornerstone of our strategy. Um, one of the various things that I take into consideration, and I think the most important one for any web effort, is that uh, the web asks a very specific question. Um, publishing comes at it by saying that perhaps the question is, what do people want to read today? Television asks, what do people want to watch today? Radio watch asks, what do people want to listen today? I think the web asks a very different question. And it's simply this, why wasn't I consulted? And so we were um, from the very get-go trying to create a community where people's voice were, uh, voices were respected and heard. And so it was to build a community. And that has led to probably one of the um, most phenomenal uh, pieces of our digital infrastructure, which has been our social media presence. And since launching um, a year ago, April, so we're not quite quite there yet, but um, after a year of very concerted, excuse me, concerted efforts to grow this community and engage it, uh, we've now um, reached a size of about 30,000 people. Um, of which 20% are engaging us on a daily basis. And um, we've just seen how this space has become a real uh, community of people who are searching for um, prayer, depth, and meaning in a world that is increasingly more and more busy and mobile, as well as uh, chaotic in many ways. And so they're, they're seeking those moments of peace and solitude um, amidst all these different distractions. And we believe that our 800 year tradition of uh, contemplation and silence has something to say to this world of beeps and buzzes. You know, I think you're, you're right on. Your social media presence is truly remarkable. I mean, within a year, you've gone uh, from very few followers on your Facebook page, for instance, to now over 30,000, one of the biggest Catholic Facebook uh, pages I've seen. And, and like you said, one of the strongest elements about it is that people aren't just uh, reading the stuff you post, they're commenting on it. And more importantly, they're sharing it with their friends. You told me about a particular example of this uh, dynamic when uh, Hurricane Sandy swept through New York. You guys produced a, a little graphic that, in essence, went viral. Tell me about that. Um, yes, uh, you know, and it's it's not just Sandy Hook, but I mean, excuse me, uh, Hurricane Sandy, but things like Sandy Hook and the various experiences that I think uh, in many ways, shapes and forms rock our, the fa fabric of our society and uh, c causes us to pause and ask the question uh, of meaning and where God is in all these things. And what we simply do is um, what we think uh, people would expect of a Carmelite, which is um, not to give much commentary on these type of events, uh, we won't go into talking about whether global warming has a role in uh, Hurricane Sandy or if gun control is something that right now is needs to be discussed. Uh, rather, we as Carmelites believe that before you can move to action, you must move to prayer. And so we allow uh, our tradition of prayer and our wonderful saints to speak um, as powerfully as they do to um, allow people to just sit with that moment and to reflect. And so uh, Hurricane Sandy was one of those opportunities um, that we just saw that we could, we could pray with our community. And um, we reached about 750,000 people that day with this prayer and was just an incredible experience again of uh, a very small province of Carmelites here in the United States who are able to at least speak and put our prayer out there for um, 
for these the victim the excuse me the victims of these uh, natural disasters or terrible terrible um, events such as Sandy Hook. A couple of times now, you've used the words prayer and contemplation, things that are very deep to the 800 year old Carmelite tradition. One of the things that drew me to you was the juxtaposition between this rich. Uh, interior contemplative way of life and your engagement with the outward busy world of social media. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about this juxtaposition of an order that has produced people like St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, Therese of Lisieux, and this world of social media? You know, it's, there's both edges to every sword, right? And so um, one could focus on the chaos of uh, social media and then generally <laughs> the internets, if you will. Um, uh, but I like to actually look at it as um, probably something that's very proper to our tradition, which is um, we are born out of the mendicancy movement. And so we as a Um, religious order as a group of men uh, who did gather around prayer were moved by that prayer into the cities to be with the people to walk with them and in many ways the marketplace of the uh, 13th uh, century is now become the social media sphere and so in some ways we're called into that chaos and so um, to walk in it though, is a whole nether edge of that sword, and it is chaotic. Um, You have every kind of voice coming at you. Um, Some are very hurt and are in need of just speaking to be able to put that out there. And for others, it is simply a opportunity to walk with us in a tradition that otherwise may have been inaccessible uh, or that they felt intimidated by. And so now this is a new uh, venue that they feel like, hey, I can do this. Um, but for me personally, uh, I think, you know, there's there's a real difficulty here because there's one of those aspects of social media is it's 24-7. And if there's one thing that I've been absolutely floored by over the past year and a half is how much time and energy it takes and so um, there's, there's a lot of call for balance. Um, if anything, what I believe for me personally is that it has broadened my view in terms of um, being able to walk with people, hear stories of both their joys, their pain, and, um, and really challenges this communion that we share as Catholics and as Christians, that we are the body of Christ. And somehow that as uh, we hurt and as we rejoice throughout the world, so too in our prayer are we to bring that. And so um, it is a challenge. And it is something that I think is fascinating and and that we really want to see how we can continue to have a voice in. One of the great benefits of social media for the Carmelite order uh, specifically surrounds the area of vocations. You know, it puts you in touch with a lot of young people who are trying to discern God's will for their life. Can you tell me how the Carmelites' social media and internet work has helped encourage vocations? Well, we're in the first year of this new strategy, and so... um if you will, the fruits of our labor are um, just being seen. Um, And if this year is any uh, measurement or any kind of um, benchmark that we can reliably uh, hold to, we've seen almost a threefold increase. Um, It's been incredible. Uh, We don't want to count the chicks before they're hatched, but um, Right now, we're engaging six to eight men for entry into um, our pre-novitiate for this upcoming uh, year. And so this would be, we averaged two to three prior to this. So 
um, depending on who actually shows up, it will be significant change um, in the numbers. But that's not just the end of the story, as anyone knows. Um, really, what this has allowed us for as a vocations effort is to speak about our charism and our tradition. And what this essentially does is that the men who come into this, um, and I, and it's not just men I should mention, um, men and women, because very early on, uh, we were going at this as purely a uh, vocations effort. And we saw that men and women were coming to us seeking their vocation in many ways, um, and that this has become a hub for the lay vocation to the um, third order Carmelites. It has become a hub for vocations for men discerning their call to uh, religious life with us as Carmelites. And we've had many a women who have been discerning their call to Carmel and have used this as a place that they have just found their passions embodied. And so we really don't feel like we um, need to limit the tradition just to this one particular uh, need that we have, and it's a very real need. Um, but so to, to limit it to just our vocations would be, uh, I think, a bit narrow. But um, in that vein, we have seen an incredible increase in um, quality men who are truly passionate about the tradition and are uh, spiritual writers, saints, and um, has also given us the opportunity to create new voices within the social media sphere. So one of our bloggers is uh, named Chris Settlemeyer, and he is currently blogging for us. Um, his blog is called Climbing Carmel, and it is the discernment of a man kind of on the journey towards joining or not. And so it's all an unfolding drama for all of us, as it were, to watch this process. But I think what Chris does so beautifully in his blog is um, reflect upon both the gift and the challenge of discernment. And so uh, engaging vocations in this way has been a way of adding some transparency to the process for people to see that it's not clean cut for any of us. The journeys are winding and they're um, they're difficult but they're they're worthwhile and I think that we uh, we're just honored to see and walk with these men that we've produced through this effort excellent well thank you so much father Dave for chatting with me and telling me a little bit about uh, what you and the Carmelites are doing uh, where can people find your great work online where can they go to read and subscribe well, uh, of course, there's always the facebook.com slash Carmelites page, as well as our web presence at www.carmelites.net. And you can find us on our Twitter handle at Carmelites. Fantastic. And for more interviews, articles, book reviews, and more, check out my blog, which is at brandonvot.com. Thanks for tuning in.